Hey guys, my name is Robert. Thanks for coming to the channel. If it's the first time here, check out the videos that I have. And uh, if there's anything that you do like, subscribe. We'd really appreciate it. So I am next to my 2017 Toyota Tacoma. And the reason why I'm doing this video today is to talk about wheel spacers. I want to talk about the goods and the bads, what to do and not to do with wheel spacers. So we'll be right back. Wheel spacers over the years have caused a lot of debate. A lot of people will say, get the right wheels. Those are bad. You're going to start to break things. Um, Stance Nation guys really love spacers. They really want the poke. Um, truck guys are doing the poke too. And they're doing it for other reasons as well. So that's why I want to talk about why people do it and uh, what you need to be aware of if you do it. So the spacers that I recommend or use are American made spacers. This one right here is by Bora. There's spider tracks and I'm sure there's a few other uh, names out there but those are the top two names that I've seen for trucks and the reason why I use them is because it was clearance. I had a uh, aftermarket JBA UCA and um, the wheel would have fit or the tire and wheel combo would have fit on the hub normally but because I picked a 305 70 17 tire which is a 34 inch tire it was much wider and i wasn't expecting that so luckily i had some spacers handy for that all right guys one thing to remember is that if you modify your vehicle it is going to wear out faster than it was stock that's a fact now however if you modify your vehicle really extreme it's going to wear out even faster so take caution if you get super big tires super big wheels super high suspension any of those things will create more wear and tear it's important to really pay attention to your components especially these wheel bearings because you can see what they can do to a car it is a very serious matter and please take caution so you think these vehicles are going to have bearing issues i'd say pretty much so please please don't do this please just don't so people will do spacers for a few reasons one is looks some people want that poke um, some people want extreme poke long travel suspensions for trucks inherently already have the poke so uh, some people want that kind of style sticking up the fenders etc jeeps are known for that as well and sometimes when you get a wheel um, they don't come in the offset that you do like to get that poke or it's just not available. So that's one of the reasons why I've seen people do that. Another reason, it's more towards the car side, is adapters, wheel adapters. So people will get them because um, the lug pattern. So like, for example, this is a six lug pattern right here. They got some wheels, they're a five lug pattern. You can't re-drill them safely. Sometimes you can but a lot of them you may not be able to and you also want an aggressive offset. So some people will get a wheel adapter spacer to offset that. So another reason you get a spacer is to clear big brakes. Some brakes are just way too large that you need to move the wheel out to make them fit. So there's two kinds of spacers that I've seen. Some are just literally just the metal part that are spacers. The one caution of this spacer, it's not hop centric. So it's not gonna center your wheel. You're gonna have a lug centric fit on your wheel hub if the spacer is too thick. Also be aware that you might need longer studs to be added to make this fit right. You do not want to have short studs because you will lose your wheels. And some actually have studs in them. Um, European cars, wouldn't have studs only because they use lug bolts, not lug nuts. Now these aren't actually truck spacers, but I just want to let you know the type of spacer that's available. These are predominantly for German vehicles like BMW and Volkswagen because they don't use the studs that we're used to for the uh, American and Japanese cars. They actually use lug bolts versus lug nuts. So. They look like floating spacers, but they're actually hub centric spacers. And you want to make sure your lug bolts the right length to fit the wheel and include the spacer 
and attach the hub properly. But the normal uh, lug spacers or lug um, vehicles that you do have, they tend to have um, the lugs built in. But the ones that don't, they do that because they're just looking for um, just to be literally a spacer, um, maybe a mild spacer. But the problem with that is you have to be concerned with how much thread is left when you're putting the, the lug bolt on. Um, let me see if I could find some nuts. All right, you got this lug nut here. And uh, when you're having your, your wheel put on here, uh, you wanna make sure that you, that you have enough uh, thread. Because if you don't, this is gonna come right off and bye bye wheel. So a lot of times I think the rule is, is eight turns, eight full turns. I'm not gonna guess, but like, you know, full turns. So you basically wanna make sure your threads are used up so these don't come out. There's two ways the wheel gets secured to the hub. Uh, one is lug centric. So the lugs actually control um, centering the wheel to the hub. Uh, another is hub centric. If you can see here, see that little lip? And what that does is that the wheel literally fits on top of that and it, it makes it uh, fit perfectly so it won't be off balance. You can see here, uh, these are for hub centric. That's why uh, there's a little recess in here. But um, you're looking for high quality spacers. You don't want to cheapen out on spacers because you literally can lose your life on it. Um, the studs can break too easily and uh, when you install them the what you have to worry about is torquing them some people will use loctite and you can use loctite but you have to be careful the way it it um the way the torque is because it's a wet torque you're putting a liquid on it it might not be the same amount of torque you would use dry so look at the instructions that come with the spacers and follow them adamantly. Also, I would probably check after 50 to 100 miles, make sure they're not loose, like retorque them, just to make sure that your uh, wheels are not gonna fall off. Trust me on that, I, I've experienced that before. That's a long story. Um, so that's about it for this video. If you have any questions or comments, post below. Hopefully I covered everything. Stay tuned for future videos, talking about DIYs, reviews, etc. You can go ahead and subscribe and hit the bell icon so you can get some new notifications when they do come in. And again, I want to say thanks again. Peace out.